Now that we've explored how we can extend an existing named class, let's look at how we can create an instance of an anonymous inner class using an object expression. To do that, we'll come over to our main function here. And now instead of instantiating an instance of fancy info provider, we're going to create an anonymous inner class. So we'll delete that. And to start off, to create our object expression, we can type object colon and then the name of the class that we want to extend. In this case, it'll be person info provider. Now within this class body, we can override any available properties or methods. So in this case, I'll update the provider info and just say something like new info provider. Now notice below here that our provider.getSessionID call is now being marked as an error. That's because there is no get session ID on person info provider, but we could go ahead and add a new method to our object expression here. So we can just say fun get session ID equals, and then we'll just put in a value here. So you see, you can not only override the existing properties and methods, but you can add to them as well, just like you could in any other named class. And now if we run this code, we'll see new info provider being printed out to the screen. So an object expression allows you to create an anonymous inner class so that you don't have to create a new named class. So this might be useful for things like a click listener if you were working in, let's say, Android development. Now that we've explored object expressions, we're going to now look at companion objects. And to do that, we're going to create a new file. And we're going to name that file entity factory. Now imagine we want to create a factory to create instances of something called entity. So to start, we might create an entity class. And maybe that class will have a single ID property to start. Now we want to make this a factory, like we said. So what we might want to do is change this constructor to be private. And so now if we add a main function and we try to create an instance of entity, we'll see that we have an issue here. We'll notice that there is this error saying cannot access init. It is private to entity. So this is because of that private constructor. Well, so what can we do? This is where a companion object could come in handy. A companion object is an object scoped to an instance of another class. So within our block body here, we can type companion object. Now we could create a create function called fun create. And we'll have that simply return an instance of entity. And for now, we'll just pass in a placeholder ID. So now we can come back down to our main function and we can type entity dot companion dot create. And we can use this to create an instance of that class. This works because companion objects have access to private properties and methods of that enclosing class. Now, in this case, we can actually shorten this by removing the reference to companion altogether. The name companion is implicit, and if you're using it from Kotlin, you can leave it off. However, if you were using this companion object from Java, you would have to reference that companion object instance directly. You can also rename your companion object. So if we wanted to name this something like factory to be a bit more explicit, we could then say dot factory and reference it that way. And so again, not needed from Kotlin, but it could be a good way to make your code more understandable from the Java side of things if you're doing a lot of Java to Kotlin interop. We can also store properties within our companion objects as well. So in this case, we could create a const val id equals id. 
And then we could come down here and replace our entity and pass that in. Now that we have this ID property added to our companion object, we can reference it from other calling code as if it was a static property like we're familiar with from Java. So we could do that by typing entity dot, and then we can reference that ID property directly. Now companion objects are like any other class in that they can also implement other interfaces. To demonstrate that, we'll create a new interface called ID provider with a single method just called get ID that will return a string. Now we can come down to our companion object declaration and we can make it implement ID provider the same way we would with any other class. We can then choose to implement the required members. And then here we will just return a simple ID. And so now when we create our instance of ID, we could rely on this get ID method if we wanted. So you see companion objects can be quite flexible if you need them to. You could use those to compose other types of behavior, store your semi-static properties or methods, and use them to create factories by referencing private inner properties or methods of the enclosing class. This is really what you would want to leverage if you want functionality similar to that of static classes, members, and fields from the world of Java. Now that we've covered object expressions and companion objects, let's take a look at creating an object declaration. To start, we're gonna clean up some of this code we've been working with. So we will remove this implementation of ID provider, and we will go back to using a placeholder ID. We'll remove this reference to entity ID, and we can remove this ID provider interface. Now, what are object declarations? An object declaration is a convenient way of creating thread-safe singletons within Kotlin. We can do this by using the object keyword and then a class name, in this case, Entity Factory. Now within this, you can add any types of properties or methods that you would like. So let's start by migrating our create method from our companion object into our entity factory. And now we can remove that companion object. And instead, we can reference entity factory dot create. Now there's one small problem with this so far, which is that entity still has only a private constructor. Now we're going to remove that private modifier for now so that we can use that constructor. However, very shortly, we will continue to refactor this code to limit the ways in which entities can be created. Now, before we go on and continue to explore some of these other class types in Kotlin, let's add to our entity class by implementing toString so that if we print out an instance of entity, we get some nice user-readable text. So we can start typing toString and then I'll use a string template here and we'll say ID colon is ID. And then we will also add in a name property here, val name of type string. And then we'll say name and then substitute in that name property. And then here in our create method, we will just put in a generic name. And now down here, we can use a print line statement and pass in our instance of entity. And now we see our new two string text being printed out to the console. So this will help us going forward, demonstrate some of how these other classes are going to work.